I'm Marty Stauffer. Catching a glimpse of a wild creature is always a thrill, but it's not always easy. For one thing, many of them are active during the night or early morning hours when most humans are asleep. And for another, all wildlife is going to do its best to avoid man. But every animal, from mouse to moose, leaves behind signs of its passing. Often, these traces tell a more complete and fascinating story than if all we see is a quick glimpse of the creature itself. It's like learning to read a strange kind of newspaper. In any season and in almost any kind of terrain, clues can be found to the wildlife that inhabits an area. The more closely you look, the more you'll be able to tell what they've been up to. It doesn't take any special equipment, just a little patience. So let's go tracking wildlife. The beauty and richness of the natural world is an open invitation to use all of our senses. Even a family picnic can become an adventure in observation, as I often discover on outings with my wife, Diane, and my daughter, Hannah. Look at these neat little flowers. They kind of look like an elephant's head. Let's call Dad. Hey, hey, Dad! Come on over here, look what we found. What is it? What do you have? New elephant heads. Elephant head what? Flowers? Yeah. They do look like little elephant heads, don't they? There's the trunk. What else? Ears and eyes. Ears and eyes. Look at that. Those are cute little guys, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Those are cute. Okay, come here. I want to show you something over here. <laughs> Listen. Smell and touch. One thing you can count on, there's always something new to be learned. Daddy, look at I have a little plate. Come here, I have something to show you right here. Come here, look over here. Footprint. You're right. What are these little ones right here that look like this? Birds. That's a bird, because they've got three little toes. And here's a bigger bird over here. Duck. Yeah, it does look like a duck. Look at these. Now, these look like a little puppy dog. You see its little feet? Yeah. But they're not. They're fox tracks. And you see how this dirt is kind of, this mud is kind of wrinkled up here? Yeah. But this is shiny? Yeah. That means they're fresh. Let's go see if we can find that fox over here by the river. Daddy? Yeah? Why tell you another fox? What? What do you want to show me? I know it looks good to be with me, though. You do? Worm. Worm. Just after we found its tracks, I spotted the little red fox by the river. I'm glad that it stayed around long enough for Hannah to see it, too. Look. 
Look. Look at that. It's cute, huh? That's a little red fox. It's wary of our voices, but uncertain which way to run. We're downwind, so it can't smell us. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Come on, let's go look for some more tracks, okay? Come on. Being able to recognize animal tracks and signs is not only fun, it's an indispensable skill in my profession as a wildlife cinematographer. Before you can film an animal, you have to find it, and there's always a lot to see along the way. Here in the swamps of northern Florida, I'm looking for black bear. I can tell from the way these tender fiddleheads of fern are cropped that there's a bear in the area. I'm glad I didn't meet up with this eastern diamondback rattlesnake the hard way. While crawling around in the brush, you must keep alert so that you don't stumble onto something you don't want to find. Even creatures that don't leave any tracks, such as these hornets, are interesting to watch from a distance but it can be dangerous to blunder into any creature's home territory. I can tell from the way the leaves are disturbed that a bear or bears has passed this way recently. I can even smell them. Finally, up ahead, I can also hear them. There's a cub, or maybe even two cubs, and it or they sound hungry. There's no breeze to keep down wind of, so I approach cautiously. Just as I suspected, there are two cubs, and the mother seems ready to nurse them. I wait until the mother bear has relaxed and the cubs have started to feed. Then, by moving quietly and taking advantage of cover, I'm able to get close enough to even hear the cubs as they suckle and make their strange little purring noises. Mother bear seems asleep, but I don't want to push my luck. It's always fun to follow tracks, and it's especially satisfying if you get to see the animal you're following.
You'll improve your chances of seeing wild animals if you stop often to look around and especially to listen. That way, you'll begin to think like a wild animal and you'll begin to hear what they hear. I discovered this handsome Colorado mule deer buck not by following its tracks, but by tuning in to the sound of something scraping against a sapling. Autumn is the rutting season, and the buck is using this aspen as a sparring partner, polishing his antlers in preparation for combat with other bucks. It must feel good to him. He almost forgets to keep watch for intruders like me. He's a beauty, but many male animals can be unpredictable at this time of year. I wait until the buck has moved on to take a closer look. Elk, bear, porcupine, rodents. Many animals leave scrapes or scratches on trees, but each animal's mark has distinctive characteristics that make it recognizable. Now, whenever I come across a tree that looks like this, I'll know what kind of creature has left its mark. Here in Ohio, autumn is the most spectacular of all seasons, with its brilliant display of color. But autumn is the hardest season for tracking wildlife. Many animals are out and about, busy feeding or mating, but the loose carpet of fallen leaves makes following a trail difficult. Unless, of course, you're a fox and can track with your nose. Winter, on the other hand, is the best time of all. Then you can study animal stories in the snow. Any creature that's not hibernating is on a constant search for food and often leaves behind a clear record of its travels. The spacing of footprints, nose prints, and even tail marks will provide valuable clues to what an animal has been up to. This red fox is hunting voles, which tunnel under the snow. Its tracks will show not only where the fox has been, but also the complete story of its hunt. Widely spaced tracks mean that an animal was running, either after prey or away from a predator. If you follow this kind of trail, you may discover the other half of the equation, in this case, a rabbit. What kind of rabbit? From the size of the tracks and their spacing, it's a cottontail. Of course, it helps to know what geographic range a creature is likely to be found in. With a sharp eye, you'll learn to spot nibbled twigs and grass that mark a feeding or resting place. Birds, too, leave obvious markings, the remains of seeds or berries, and sometimes less apparent signs like the marks of their beaks or wing prints where they've landed or taken off. Even if we never see the creature that made the tracks, it's fun to imagine them there. 
although most of the time, birds are just a little tough to track. Tracking larger mammals, like this moose in Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park, means going farther from home, but the basic signs are still the same. Besides footprints, an animal's droppings, or scat, can provide a lot of information, such as what kind of food it's eating, or how long ago it was in the neighborhood. The bull moose tends to be a loner after he shed his antlers. This one seems content among the willows, his favorite winter food. So I want to be careful not to disturb him. After seeing the moose, I'm inspired to take a snow coach trip into nearby Yellowstone National Park. Millions of people are awed by its summer beauty, but few ever experience the magnificent solitude it offers in winter. Practically the only living creatures for hundreds of square miles are wild ones, like these mule deer. And all the natural features the park is noted for, such as steaming geysers, are at their most breathtaking. It's the perfect place to go tracking wildlife and to see how they make it through the harsh winter. I can't even believe it's so cold. How do animals survive out here? Marty, it's only zero. You gotta be here when it's minus. After a beautiful drive, I arrange for the snow coach driver, Gail Richardson, to let me off and then pick me up again later in the day. This looks like a good spot in here. Let me out in here somewhere. What are you going to do? I have a little wildlife tracking expedition that I'm going to go on here. Okay, I'll see you later. Thanks. All right. Well, good luck. Okay, thanks. Right out in the middle of nowhere. One of my favorite places to be. And there at my feet, I find the first tracks. They're too rounded for an elk and too wide for even a moose, so they must belong to a bison. The bugle of an elk in the distance tells me there may be other surprises ahead. Winter may be the easiest time for tracking, but it's the hardest time for the animals themselves. Every last ounce of energy must be used to take in more energy. 
What meager food can be found goes toward simply maintaining body heat. So I'm careful to keep my distance and not cause these elk to waste their needed energy by running from me. Following the tracks into the next valley, I surprise a coyote at a bison carcass, another reminder of how precarious nature's balance can be. Finally, the bison's trail leads to the bison itself, a small band of them, in fact. I find myself warmed by the thought of how many countless winters these great shaggy beasts have survived, patiently using their heads to push the snow away from buried grass. As I leave the bison behind and climb a windswept ridge, I come across another surprise, a band of Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep foraging where the snow is thin. The surprise is that they're very tolerant of my presence. Bighorn sheep are among my favorite wild animals, so I feel right at home with this herd. But it's getting late, and reluctantly I begin to retrace my own tracks, glad to know that this herd seems in healthy shape, fit for the cold months ahead. Yellowstone is an amazing wonderland, full of the most varied habitats. It's well known that many kinds of creatures congregate around the warm geyser basins. I don't find any sign of larger animals, but I'm fascinated by the tiny brine flies that live and mate and die between this warm, wet earth and the freezing air a few inches above. This spider can also survive here by preying on the brine flies. Mineral deposits make a strangely colorful backdrop for this activity. Even the algae is interesting in its ability to thrive in warm or hot water. And these trumpeter swans, equally at home in ice water, are a reminder that once you start tracking wildlife, there's no end to where it might lead. Just as all creatures' lives are interconnected, so are their trails. Heading back to the road, I'm amazed at all I've seen. Wild animals are creatures of habit. Most circle a home territory, season after season. So if you find a set of tracks, the chances are that, eventually, with enough patience, you'll be able to see the animal that made them. If you want to learn more about tracking, the best help you can give yourself is a field guide to animal tracks. The clear illustrations will help you distinguish among the tracks made by the amazing variety of animals that live here in North America. A 
A good guide will also describe the other signs made by an animal and point out differences in age, sex, and even the speed of travel. A walk along a river bank or a beach or through fields and woods will always reveal fascinating clues. Twigs chewed off by a beaver. Tree bark scraped off by a deer, a porcupine, or even a bear. A regurgitated owl pellet, full of the undigested fur and bones of its prey, from which you can tell what it's been eating. Or perhaps some bird feathers, like this downy plume from a golden eagle. Nature has few secrets that she won't share with a persistent observer. Look carefully and you'll find clues to stories as dramatic as those in any detective novel. Stories that really happen and that go on happening every day and every night, just waiting to be discovered. Nature is full of messages. As you develop your skills at tracking, you'll be able to recognize and interpret more and more different kinds of these signs. Knowing how to read them will also give you a better chance of seeing the animals themselves. It's often helped me to get within photographing distance of creatures I would otherwise have missed. But no matter what you see, you'll begin to feel closer to wildlife. In learning to look and listen carefully, you'll become more alive and alert to your own senses as you begin to think like a wild animal. In this way, the side benefits are at least as satisfying as the goal of tracking wildlife. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.